What I'd like to do is maybe talk a little bit about when we first met. Uh, let's start with the Legacy Town Center, this area here. Um, many of you have heard, heard of Femi probably, and uh, when I met Femi, it was back in 2004, or, or 2000, late 2004, early 2005. I was getting ready to run for a city council, and we are introduced. Do you remember where we ate? Do you remember where we Jasper's. Jasper. We met a Jasper. Jasper. We met a Jasper. Jasper had just opened up recently. It was uh, one of the rated one of the coolest restaurants, top restaurants in the country. Later on, Kent Rathburn uh, won the Iron Chef. And I was relatively new to Plano, and I actually hadn't known about the Legacy West Legacy Town Center. So, Femi, why don't we start there? Um, tell us about how the shops of Legacy got started. How long it took you? What was the process? How did you get involved? Let's, let's t start from the beginning. Well, the, first of all, thank you for being here. I'm just humbled this crowd here in hot uh, Texas day. Thank you for being there and thank you for having me. The Shops of Legacy, or Legacy Town Center, really, it's, um, it was 1998, 1999. Um, I was building grocery anchored uh, shopping center, Albertsons mostly, and a good friend of mine and who also does construction work for EDS approached me and said, EDS is thinking uh, to do something in front of their headquarters. I was reluctant to involve because I said, hey, I do grocery anchor shopping centers and I'm not sure if I'm interested being there. So literally uh, three, four months passed and every time we eat lunch or dinner, he insisted. So I came to see uh, a, a, a wonderful person, uh, a wonderful leader uh, named Marilyn Casco. And she was the director of uh, real estate at EDS Corporation. And, and she told me that what she thought that she liked to see there. So that's that meeting, and I said, mm, I think I can do this. And, and so uh, there were some others that EDS was considering as a developer. And then I said, hey, Marilyn, you know, if I'm going to come here and do all these things, we don't need to be thinking of something just for Legacy Business Park. We need to think much bigger picture. Let's just do something that is really regional that we can draw from very large uh, radiuses and place for North Texas, in a way. So that's how the, it started in 99. So how long did it take you to actually build, to finish building out this first phase of, of Legacy Town Center? So we started uh, 1999, and, and first building that was topped out right across the lake, Bishop Lake, uh, was the residential component. So at the millennium, December 31st, I have a photo of uh, the constructions guy taken that was the top. So, uh, so it's January 2000 was the first building and first retail store that opened was Starbucks, was opened 2002. So it has been 15 years. 15 years, okay. So Legacy, Legacy Town Center, uh, for phase one, about 75 acres? 70? So yeah, total uh, Legacy Town Center, what we call is, uh, comprises 168 acres, 75 acres on the south side of um, uh, Legacy, and other 75 acres from Legacy to headquarters, and we had another 18 acres headquarters to Granite Park. So that's overall 168 acres development. And today is fully developed except uh, probably 10 acres of that remains as a vacant land. Very good. Okay. And we have, I mean, I can give you all kinds of numbers. We have over 4,000 residences, 3,600 multifamily units, over 400 townhomes. So that makes 4,000 residential units. So if you estimate one and a half or two, we have 8,000 people currently live in Legacy Town Center. Very good. And you know, I got to enjoy that. I was sharing with Femi uh, earlier. We had some work being done at our home, so we're staying here at the Marriott for a week. And I always talk about the live, work, and play environment. It's pretty, pretty cool when you can get out of your, where your house, so to speak, 
and walk to work. And for two days, I didn't get in my car. And it's not like I have it bad. I have a three and a half minute commute. But it still was better just to be able to walk around and, and enjoy not actually get in your vehicle. So I can understand how that concept of live, work, and play and have to be in that same environment. I so don't even play now, but I feel like I do because I spent at least 12, 14 hours here in my office in town center. But my wife and I, we come from south to spend weekends. That's our vacation. So very good. You I stay, like the same I like thing. that. Very good, <laughs> so, very good. But, but one thing I was going to tell you, when we uh, uh, started the town center concept, uh, Frisco was uh, building uh, the mall, Stonebriar Mall, and uh, the Willow Bend was under uh, consideration. A lot of people thought that I was crazy trying to do this here. I've been told many other things. I'm not going <laughs> to repeat. <laughs> but but, but uh, uh, truly, a lot of people thought that this could not happen. And But you see it what it, it is. It now. is. Well, speaking of happening, it happened so well that we then moved on to to phase two, the next, the next, the north side. So just again, kind of paralleling the my 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 time and relationship with Femi. I remember being at the William Sonoma home opening. How many of you knew there was a William Sonoma where this Capitol grow now? Right. It's about half the room, or not even half the room. So. Many of you do, do, you know Capitol Grill and Legacy Bank this there, but it was a William Sonoma home there. Across the street was a Robin Stuckey, which is now the office tower. And we were at the grand opening, uh, and uh, you know maybe you can share with us kind of what was different the second time around. Because during this time, I know we had you know the economy had um, had taken a turn around 07, 08. Uh, we had where Mexican sugar was is now was coast, so there was some transition. Because I think what happens is that the, the thought is automatically everything turns into gold. And I want you to maybe share some of the struggles, some of the difficulties you had. Uh, and then if you could take a minute and tell, talk to us about probably the most expensive cemetery in, that I've ever known of. I get <laughs> questions about that all the time. I, I don't know how much money you have to be worth to, be, to, to, to die with to, to be buried in that cemetery. So maybe you could tell us a little bit about that as well. Okay, so the, um, the first the struggles, obviously, you know, everybody looks at today, wow, all these things happening, but you, like anything else, you go through the cycle. So we start construction, uh, building our buildings, September 11, tragedy. Uh, a 2001 hit, so that was everything shut down. You know what our country going through, so it was very stressful moment. So can we continue to build our buildings? Can we uh, get tenants? You know, Bob Steakhouse, everybody loves it. Bob Samuel said, "Maybe maybe we shouldn't open." Well, they continued open, so it hasn't been without struggles. But you know, if you uh, firmly believe on the vision and have the staying power and you know, believe what you do, so it, it worked. Uh, so when on the north side, uh, we have north one phase and north two phase, and the one that you're referring to, north two phase, where uh, capital grill and season Mexican sugar. So yes, we had that 2008-2009 uh, uh, financial crisis hit, and, and all suddenly William Sonoma said, hey, we got to close, so we spent over five million dollars to build a store, and next thing is they are vacating. Then we built most beautiful bookstore, uh, Legacy Books, those of you know, and uh, it was like a museum quality, and and that that didn't work, and we had not to use the furniture, so we had all suddenly about 30 percent of our leasable area vacant. Uh, but we were fortunate that that uh, we are in Plano. Texas, and, and, and all the corporations that surround us, our uh, restaurant business is very strong, and, and therefore, uh, Capital Grills and Seasons and jumped on the opportunity, so we were very fortunate to reestablish those businesses. So now, that, the question about the cemetery, so in, uh, you know, we're building a pedestrian-friendly urban environment. That's what Legacy Town Center is. So the reality that I wish that I didn't have Legacy Drive in the middle and north and south was and trust one. Trust me, he's told me about that before. <laughs> 
<laughs> but, but so the connectivity, south and north and all that, and the middle also this uh, historical landmarker. So, uh, and it's kind of a divider between the two north phases. So that initial idea was, so it's there to state how we can integrate part of that. So when you travel in some older cities, Baltimore, New York City, Washington, you see these historical cemeteries that turn into parks, so that was kind of my idea that we can uh, turn into uh, part of what we do. And then, and then at that time we had these longhorns and uh, there are 19 longhorns and three cowboys. So we said, uh, we said we can make that part of Texas history. Here's a, a historical cemetery and we designed it with the help of Robert Summers who was the uh, the sculptor of these bronzes, so it become a nice amenity to what we've done. So you held on to a bit of the past as we look towards the future. Absolutely. Which is what creates a sense of connectivity from in terms of history of a... Of, of a sure, of a I love kids climbing on those longhorns and families taking pictures, and I see that all over, so it's, it's just a great satisfaction. So now I'm going to ask you a question. Now, I don't know if you'll remember, because you didn't remember when we had lunch the first time, but I'm going to ask you this question, see if you remember. So it was at, it was at the, the, ground, the grand opening of Williamson Elm, and we're standing right around where Legacy Bank was, and we're looking over on the other side. Do you remember what our conversation was? He doesn't uh, remember. Uh, 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 you're just, oh, the leg, looking at the Legacy we're, look, was, we're looking on the other side. Do you remember what I the, asked you? Yeah, go ahead. I said, I, yeah, he said, go ahead. That's because he doesn't remember. I said, Femi, how great would it be if you built that other side. Uh, you don't remember what you said to me either. He said, I'm too old for that stuff. That's what he said to me. <laughs> now he used another S word, but we're in a PG rated room, so we're not gonna say exactly what he said. But he said, I'm too old to, to do that, I'm done here. And so fortunately, you changed your mind. And, uh, and we'll get to the Legacy West in a moment. But before we actually get to Legacy West, I wanna just step back a little further. Um, just kinda how it all got started for you. I know you're from Turkey. Uh, in case you, that's not a Texan accent, by the way. He's from Turkey. I'm faking it. You're faking it. There you go. Uh, tell us about your journey to the States, initially here to the States, uh, to, to, to the Dallas area, and just how you got involved in real estate in general. And then we'll dive into Legacy West. Sure. Well, first, thank you for that question. I love telling my story. Um, as all these political debates, whether American dream is... Uh, alive or dead and all that, I am American Dream. Uh, I came um, in uh, 1978, so almost 37 years ago from Istanbul, Turkey as a graduate student. Uh, my parents barely could put $100 in my pocket, uh, but I had a good scholarship from Turkish company that was paying my tuition and little spending money to get my graduate degree. So that's how my American journey started. And, and um, literally, I went to a Turkish restaurant, I applied for a job. They said, well, your English is not good enough. Still is not. But, uh, <laughs> and, and then, and then um, they gave me, a, they said, well, if you want to do something outside, they had these flyers, uh, restaurant flyers, coupons. If you want to hand it out, we'll pay you $3 an hour, one meal a day. I said, I'll take it. I really did stayed in the corner of 5th Avenue and 55th uh, Street. You know, we, we, we share the same thing. You started from New York, came here. I started in New York, came here. Uh, and, and, and that's how you know, I started. And, um, and then um, after six months or so in New York, I uh, came to visit a cousin of mine who still lives here in McKinney. And, um, and I love the people. I love, that was America to me. I don't want to sound prejudiced against New York and all that, but, uh, the, the, you know, Texas, the, watching the Western movies and people. So I felt uh, very much people were very friendly. They didn't say, hey, you speak with accent, you're from Turkey, whatever. They were very welcoming. So, so I said, I'm going to move there. What so, year was that? Was so that, that I moved. To Dallas. Uh, Dallas. So arrived in the United States 1978, July, March 79. So nine months after I arrived. So uh, I, I came to 
Dallas, and since then Dallas has been home. So, um, how did you get involved in, in the real, real, estate. real estate? So that again, you know, I, uh, I'm not gonna sound like very religious way, but you know, you have to believe in God's will. I do. Uh, a lot of things happen. I'm a very blessed, lucky individual. So, um, so as I was going to graduate school, I didn't finish the Columbia. I started there and then um, uh, finished North Texas, actually. Uh, got my MBA. But as I was doing that, I was doing odd jobs. I was doing bartending, these, that. But true story for how I got in real estate, I love playing soccer. Nowadays, you're watching European Cup and all that if you're interested. But uh, I ran into a man in a soccer match that was in real estate, and he needed some help and offered me a job. I said, I'll take it. He was my sponsor to get my green card to be resident in the United States. So that's how I started it with him. Uh, and I started 1980, worked for him. 1984, I started my own business. So. Tell, tell me about your first development. What was it? What, what did you build? My first development was 1985. I built an 8,000 square foot little neighborhood strip center at Webb Chapel and Larga Drive in Dallas. It's kind of north of Bachman Lake. That was my first development and that was like an incredible thing to do. And then from there, you, you went on and did a couple more projects before you came. Oh, uh, many, many projects along the lines, but you know, um, so um, how much time we have? <laughs> we got all day. We have all day. They're here. Everybody no, took the, a day off the, from work. The, They're here. The, the thing is that it sounds like a fairy tale story, but I have to tell. I mean, I couldn't be here today if it wasn't my wonderful wife, Elizabeth. You know him well. And she was from Alabama, graduated from. Auburn University Industrial Engineer. She had a very good job at Texas Utilities at the time. And so having her making great salary and being a female engineer in a very male-dominated uh, industry, we knew that her job was secure. So that enabled me to take risks. You know, without risk, you can't achieve these things. So even the difficult times, and Elizabeth says, honey, you love what you do, let's go do it. And so that's uh, a part of it and then so as I did and those of you young I mean old enough to remember RTC years there was a savings loan crisis in the late uh, uh, 80s and and the, they formed Resolution Trust Corporation and all that so I saw an opportunity to buy distressed assets from uh, government uh, banks and all that and start forming partnership and one thing led another and, and then uh, I was one of the very early pioneers in 1993 uh, at LBJ and MacArthur Boulevard in Las Colinas, uh, Valley Ranch area, built a, a development called MacArthur Crossing, about 115 acres before anything else happened in that corner. So again, same thing. I was told at that time the crazy Turk where they but they <laughs> they, they, they 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 that's Dallas real estate guys first really uh, uh, heard of me because of that large development become hugely successful. Um, and then it led to other Albertsons and so sure. on and so forth. So. So one of the things that's interesting, Femi, uh, you mentioned it's kind of God's will. I, I, I kind of say the same thing. There's no such thing as coincidences. Uh, you know, our lives parallel in so many ways, uh, both immigrants. Uh, he mentioned, you know, Columbia University. What he didn't say is that where he stayed at Columbia University was literally a block away from where I grew up. So I wasn't smart enough to get into Columbia. But I was smart enough to crash the parties. <laughs> so we, we might have actually been at the same party uh, that the six, nine months for me. And then here you are in, in, in Dallas, and you talk about your wife, similar to myself. You know, my wife brought, up, brought me out here, and had it not been for her with a good salary, I couldn't have started off as a financial advisor, which is a high risk uh, uh, employment opportunity because two out of nine make it past three years in the financial service business, but she f kept me floating and 
said, as long as you, you know, you, you believe in yourself, I believe in you. So, uh, and a lot of, a lot of parallels between us is, which is what makes, makes it so fun to Gee. be part of what's going on here today. So we're, we're going to talk about what most pe everybody came here to talk about, which is Legacy West. Um, t this time is different. Everybody knows the success that's happened in Legacy. You got a lot more competition you know, around, you know, north of 121. By the way, I got a new campaign slogan in case I run. I'm going to build a wall at 121, make Frisco pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Yeah? Just kidding. And this is being taped. Just kidding. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> but we, ha we have that, co you have that competition that's there. It's real. Uh, not, only, not only in Frisco, but really all, all over. All over. The, I think uh, this is an area that everyone... Uh, in Irving and in Dallas, there's just, there's just the competition is real. Um, so here it is, it's, um, I get elected May 2013, and I see that in the paper it's early, maybe February 2014, early 2014, uh, J.C. Penney puts up uh, 240 acres. So we put in context, the current legacy is 160 or so, you said 160 acres, now we got a 240 acres. And um, you know you 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 were the developer of cho that, that was chosen, and I remember reading the article. It said uh, you know this is a huge project. It'll probably take you know five to seven, uh, maybe up to ten years to complete. And I'm thinking, well, they obviously don't know it's Femi Carahan because here we are about almost three three years into it. It'll be three years, three and a half years. It'll be almost done. So you know, ten years is is developer years, three and a half years is, is FEMA years. And so uh, tell us about how you won. It was competitive in terms for you, number one, get, being the developer of choice. So I remember you telling me about how you put together a dream team to, to make the presentation. And then share with us really some of the things that are going on behind the scene in terms of you, uh, number one, uh, securing the being the developer of choice and then, and then getting the helping uh, being the part of the economic development conversations with our economic development director Sally Bain, cooperation with the city, um, some of the, th the things that you have to work on that really happens behind the scene, and of course, just share with us uh, what what we have, what we can expect to come in in the center of the universe. Sure, but first of all, you know I am really good builder. I can build great walls. So you just. <laughs> there we go. He's always so, working a deal. He's always working a deal. So all you do is just. <laughs> no, that. Uh, so the, you know, again, uh, going back, you have to reflect in history. So 1998, and I'm talking to EDS of Legacy Town Center. So right now you see this developed and all that, but if you go 1998, I don't know if there are slides, so there is not much of around us. And actually there were close to uh, 2,000 or 1,800 acres of vacant land in Legacy Business Park. So a lot of the corporations that are here today were not there. Ericsson wasn't there, Pizza Hut wasn't there, a number of them. So I don't want to lose, but at that time, I looked at the land across the street at J.C. Penney's land, and J.C. Penney moved their headquarters from mid Manhattan in early 80s. They purchased 355 acres of land and they used only 110 acres. So 240 acres was called excess land. And so I'm looking at that land. I said, oh my God, if somebody tries to build across the street and I'm going to try to do something east side. At that time, I was told that, you know, uh, JC Penn didn't need. Uh, funds, they weren't going to sell the land, so it was good, we started. So with the success of Legacy Town Center, as I developed all these acreage, I started looking at the west side and, and had built relations with J.C. Penney executives. And um, so it took about six years or so for them to say, you know, we're going to put. Obviously, everybody heard about the difficulties they faced. Uh, meanwhile, they wanted to do a beauty contest, being the public company. And they invited four other development companies, uh, including myself. And I looked at the uh, very big names, Trammell Crow, Lincoln, uh, Heinz, and those kind of names. I said, 
who am I with these giants and all that. So I said, I want to make sure that I have a strong team. So I went to uh, uh, KDC, uh, and they are the developer. They are currently building the Toyota and Liberty Mutual buildings, and we're building the Chase buildings with KDC, and then another uh, apartment developer that is most reputable in our area, Robert Shaw, Columbus. So we called ourselves Dream Team and later named it Team Legacy. And our presentation was liked the most by JCPenney executives. What we have a uh, program that we designed and explained that what we're able to do and can do, uh, ultimately, uh, they chose us. It took two years. It wasn't easy because of the changes uh, within JCP and organization. Ron Johnson came from Apple, left. Mike Allman came back. But that's how it started, you know. So, and then once we uh, secured the land, we announced in 2014, February. So nobody could, including myself, imagine that we will be here 28 months later or so and, and talking about consuming uh, everything but uh, 17, 18 acres left. So uh, incredible. I hear the words astonishing, uh, you know, unprecedented, and a lot of things. So that, um, so am I answering the yes, question? Yes, so tell us about um, as, uh, that process. And, you know, we've heard of the, some of the, obviously, the major successes, Toyota. Uh, Liberty Mutual, uh, J.P. Morgan, FedEx, Hilti. I mean, all these companies that are coming coming to the area. What are some of the behind-the-scenes uh, activities that you're, you participate as we look to bring them on? Well, you know, as you know, uh, these are very, very competitive deals. And every city, every state is trying to get these deals. And uh, so there is always nervousness. And are we going to be the finalist? And certainly, that's it. So what we sell, certainly, great you know, city, Plano, your leadership, and city staff uh, leaders, and Celia's group. So uh, going there, presenting what we are. And we'll say, like you said, we're the center of universe. We have the best circulation in any place in Dallas. We're in the corner of uh, North Texas, 121 and Toll Road, and our, on all that, and great infrastructure, schools. So we're telling all of those, but yet we're still competing with other cities. And then you have our neighboring city that has much bigger bucket then we ask, they keep throwing money. So that what makes us the win at the end, that again, our location, location. And then these companies really today, in the past, it used to be they will bring their CFO financial peoples when they are evaluating re relocations. But nowadays they are bringing their uh, HR people and then human resources sitting there and they are saying that, you know, we want to attract talent but also we want to retain that talent. And so therefore, they want to give them, their employees, their associates, best possible location, amenities, and all that. So that's what we offer, combined. It's just not Legacy Towns or Legacy West, but they love that, being able to go to their condos or townhomes and apartments, walk to the restaurants, have that. That's the millennial, young, bright, workforce wants that. So therefore, it's been easier. And also, I can easily say, look what I've done across the street. And, and so that speaks itself. So so speaking of the amenities, Femi, tell us about some, some of the amenities that we can expect to, to see in Legacy West in the not too distant future. So, well, you know, the, once we start uh, designing Legacy West, certainly announcement of Toyota and Liberty Mutual create uh, much excitement and gave us more comfort that we could do another big retail development. So, um, and once that decision was made and I needed to decide, you know, I wanted to unify with shops, town center, but be different. And of course, you know, 1998, I said nobody believed that we could do it, but here we are. You know, in 2004, with all the success, so capital market was uh, available to me, and you know, one of the largest real estate funds wanted to be partner. With that, 
we said we can go three, four notches higher quality material. So when you're going to come Leggett's West, uh, you know, all the roads going to be stone and pavers and, you know, uh, our fountain is going to be two, three times bigger and a lot of stuff. The materials that we're using is going to be uh, natural stone. So it's, it's wow factor. And also, uh, 1998, 19, nobody believed that we could attract national retailers. Now everybody's kind of lining up to be there. Uh, so uh, it's going to be a showcase place. I can comfortably tell you that I don't think that anyone is going to be able to duplicate for decades to come development like this. So, and then um, uh, the one thing I'm really excited about it, in addition to number of great restaurants, and you know we're, we're going to have another 15 great restaurants that. You know, True Food, North Italia, Del Frisco, Double Eagle, uh, Alberto Lombardi. Don't forget Shake Shack. Shake, Shake Shack, Shack, of Shake course, Shack. from New York. You know, we're going to bring. That was the first lease they signed in Texas, Dana Myers. Uh, so, but also, I'm very excited, truly. Uh, the, our food hall, we call it Legacy Hall. Uh, it's going to be three-story, uh, beautiful food hall that I see. And like, if I go some city, another country, in Spain or Italy, and I want to go discover the local food, local vendors, and gourmet food, that's the place. You smell the aroma. So if you're building a food hall that in the first floor is going to have about 25 different eateries, and, and it's going to have a beautiful uh, garden in the back, 18,000 square foot that we could do live entertainment, music, community gatherings, and all that. So that uh, it's going to be an incredible traffic generator, not for just only Plano, Mr. Mayor, but it's going to be for probably pretty much entire we'll North Texas. Open the door for that wall so people could come in. The, uh, please, <laughs> please. Uh, for uh, that person, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but don't require visa or anything, okay? <laughs> 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 so, so, are there any of the the retailers that you can you're comfortable sharing with us? Uh, sure. You, you mentioned a few restaurants. No, I mean we have a lot of restaurants. I can't give you the entire restaurant thing, you know that. Uh, and then, um, the we we have. Didn't I see Tesla? Uh, Tesla, Tesla. Well, you know, I'm not supposed to do public announcement, but it was it was in the PNZ. In the newspaper, yeah, so Tesla has I a. <laughs> I didn't bring it. I didn't bring it up. It was, I read it. It must be true. Right? <laughs> it is. It is. Now Tesla, you know, has a in North Park. They have their display uh, store, and they take. They cannot sell cars, but they can take reservations, and you buy it online. But we'll have a Tesla store. Uh, one other thing I'm really excited is a true New York institution, Dean DeLuca. Those of you being in, in New York, it's an institution uh, that uh, gourmet food takeaway grocery store combination. So uh, that will be a phenomenal addition. We are very excited. Um, and, and, and some other stores that are not anywhere here. Uh, brands like Warby Parker, Bonobo, Suit Supply, these are upcoming great retail concepts that they were searching for second location in Dallas market. They are either at North Park Mall or uh, around West Village area, Uptown area. So now they are, they are going to come here and be in Plano. Very good. Any reason why you, you see why we call this the center of the universe? Let's give them a hand. Give them a hand. So, in, in, in closing, what I'd like to say um, is, you know, anybody, many people could have built um, the buildings and the structures here in Legacy, and it's debatable as to which companies would have came, whether FEMA was here or not. You know, some people say they'd come anyway, and I argue that he, he, he's that special sauce, the, the secret ingredient. In, in the mix that makes us a little different. Uh, but I think what makes Legacy special is the attention and care that Femi provides. And I'll share a story. Again, he doesn't know, even know about this, but I was ha meeting him one day for lunch. And if you, if you ever see Femi, he has this fast-paced walk. He's like, he's on the go. And he's walking, and it was in front of uh, Taco Diner. He's walking. I'm across the street. I'm about to, I'm going to go meet him at Nicola's. And I see him stop in his tracks, and then he stops and he does this. 
And I said, uh-oh, somebody's in trouble. <laughs> so he, saw, he noticed that, I don't know if it was a little crack on the sidewalk or something, but the, the attention to detail that this man puts in every, every bit of, every square inch of the, his project is amazing. It's like his home. So he saw that and, and he registered in his mind and I know whatever it was, it was fixed in a probably very short order uh, because that's the type of care and that's, the, that's, that's what makes legacy different. Anybody could have built those buildings but only, only Femi could have built legacy and Legacy Town Center and now Legacy West. So in closing, Femi, anything you'd like to say? Well, I'm very lucky, fortunate to be here in, in, in great state of Texas, great city of Plano, and thankful, you know, I couldn't do it. I get a lot of credit for that, but I uh, couldn't do great people, great support, and certainly uh, leadership of city of Plano has been extremely important. Uh, you know, there are some communities, I won't name it, and further south, and if you try to build it, there's all kinds of obstruction. So you're already competing, and you don't want obstruction, so I had a great relation with our city, our community. So those are things that I'm very thankful, and um, we look forward to completing this development. Um, our grand opening date uh, for first phase of shops or the Legacy West shops is going to be March 2nd, 2017. He's not kidding. He's telling you March 2nd. It'll be and, ready and March hold 2nd. Uh, 10 a.m. It's a Texas... 10 a.m. 10 a.m. And, and, and Texas <laughs> Independence Day. You're all welcome. Uh, and, 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 then, and then obviously that's... Uh, and then 2017, uh, third and last quarter, Toyota, Liberty Mutual, Chase, all these companies are targeting to bring their employees. So when you look at the skyline of West Plano, uh, 2017, uh, October, November, you're, everybody's going to say, wow, is that true? So that's what I'm looking forward to. Thank so, you for having me. So now, uh, just one couple of things. First of all, our city staff is really squirming over there because now they got a March 2nd deadline at 10 a.m. So <laughs> you guys got your marching orders. Uh, and, and, sec and lastly, I, I think just from a, again, from a standpoint of um, what, what matters to, to Femi, I know, is he truly believes in creating a sense of place. And it's really appropriate that where he's working, this area is called Legacy because he's traveled throughout the world. And he's, he's always talk, talks to me about creating a legacy for a community. It's really not only about um, creating a profitable uh, business uh, venture here in, 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 the, in our area, but it's creating a sense of place for a community, a sense a place that will be there for years and years, way past uh, when he's here. And, you know, there's been years of kids that have their, 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 their dinner for their prom here and there's memories that's created and that's part of what he he really looks to do and again um we are so thankful that you chose plano or plano chose you or however it worked out but it's all good and and let's give him a hand because he does not like doing this but he did it anyway and and we thank him thanks